What is up, YouTube? We are here in the office again, and we're coming at you guys with yet another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. And I'm super pumped about this one. And what I'm going to be doing, as you can tell from the title, is I'm gonna teach you guys how to take any photo or logo or emblem or any kind of still frame object that you can have, bring it into Fusion and turn it from this to this. Let me show you how to do that. All right guys, now that we are here in DaVinci Resolve yet again, we are going to go over this local dissolve effect. So as you can see, I have my footage and my logo all placed in here and I have a quick color grade on my footage as well. And this is a 4K file, like this uh, clip right here is 4K. And a little tip for better playback and better ease on the computer for like, any effect you're gonna be using in Fusion is to come up here to File and come down to Project Settings. And this is gonna pop up and what we wanna come down is Timeline Resolution and we wanna go to 1280 by 720. And what this is gonna do is reduce the resolution of your project, making it less intensive on your processors and your graphics cards and your memory. And I know another thing you can do is come back to playback and go to proxy mode and put it at quarter resolution. I just noticed that I have better results when I come down to the project settings and turn it to 720. And to turn it back, all you gotta do is come to project settings come up here and you can pick 4k 1080 whatever you want and davinci resolve will automatically rescale and resize everything and you can export it and it'll be 4k all right now that we have that out of the way and we have both of our clips our, our clip and our logo placed on our timeline i know that i want this effect to start as i start blowing on my uh, my logo that way it pushes it into particles and pushes it off the screen So I want to find out where that spot is which is right about here. I want to cut my logo and I want to Take the razor tool and cut my clip and I'm gonna come back up here select my selection tool highlight both of these clips and I want to right click and I want to put new fusion clip and once I've done that what we want to do is put our playhead over the fusion clip and we come down here and go right into the fusion tab. All right, now that we are in fusion, we'll kind of organize our nodes to give us a little bit more room here. All right, so this should be our logo as it is. And this one should be our footage. All right, I'm going to bring our logo into here. I'm going to drag this down to make this effect. What we are going to use is something called the particle image emitter, and we are going to use a particle renderer, and then we're going to use a couple other effects to make the particles fly all over. And we'll get into that in a minute. But to get the particle image emitter, you want to hit shift spacebar. Now I'll bring up this select tool and you can just type in P I. And what that is going to bring up are these three options. We want to hit particle image emitter and we want to add that. Now that that's added in, we can see that we have two separate pipelines coming out of our media two here, which is our logo. What we want to do is disconnect this one and keep our image particle image emitter selected and connected to our logo. And if you come right over here and hover over this one, it says P renderer. This is a particle renderer and we want to select that and that'll bring it in here and we want to connect our renderer to our merge node and once that is done it should load it back up and we will be back in business and we're going to come over here to our first frame of this sequence i'm going to scroll in on our logo and you can see that it's all got these lines and it looks kind of like checkerboard, like a checkerboard almost. What we want to do is come over here to our particle image emitter, select that, come up here to the brush, which is going to be the style. Select on that, and we want to come down here on our style tab and select blob. Once blob is selected, it'll kind of get faded like that. What we want to do is come down to our size controls 
and we want to bring that size up until we feel that we're happy with what it looks like and I want it to be about right there. So now that we have our particles in the blob style and have it look in the way we want it to look, we want to select our particle image emitter again, come back to our main inspector page here under the controls. And what we want to do is we need to create, or we need to create the particles moving around and moving left, right, forward, backwards, whatever you really want it to do, all that is going to be controlled under velocity. So what we want to do is select velocity and just raise it up just a little bit. I think we're going to come to about 0 0.094 in our variance. Because we want to bring that up just a little bit as well. And as you can see right here on our uh, logo is already starting to dissolve into particles. Now, if we just played this forward, they're going to go to the right, and we want it to go to the left as we are blowing on it from right to left. So to control that, you come down here to where it says angle, and this will control every, like whether it goes up, down, right, left, diagonal, any way you want it to go. And we want to select negative 180 to make it go left. And if you wanted the particles to come at the screen, almost if you were in 3D space, or if you wanted the particles to go away from the camera, you could control all of that using the angle Z. That is your Z angle, making it come at you or go away from you. But for this, all we really want is for it to go to the left. So let's see how that looks right there. All right, that is perfect. We want it just like that. What I'm gonna do is zoom out just a little bit on this. I'm going to make it just there, just like that. Now, I'm gonna show you another thing you can add to kind of add to this effect and make it look really, really cool. So all you gotta do is hit Shift and Spacebar one more time, and we're gonna type in turbulence. It's T-U-R, it will be enough. And we want the particle turbulence, and we're gonna add that into our node tree here. And with the particle turbulence selected, we want to increase our X strength our Y strength, quite a bit actually, and then our Z strength, just a little bit. And what this is going to do is gonna allow our particles to go theoretically all over the place. It's like adding wind into your scene or some kind of adding turbulence into it. So it's gonna cause these particles to go all over. And if I push play, you'll see what I mean here. But as you can see right here, those particles are going all over. All right, I like that. So one other thing we want to do is come down to the particle image emitter and to control the lifespan of these particles or how long they're going to last in our sequence or in our timeline is right here. It's called lifespan. It's right now it's for 100 frames. I only want this to last for, let's say, 36 frames. So all you got to do is come down here, double click, type in 36 and it's only going to last for 36 frames and now I'm going to leave the lifespan variance and position variance alone and that right there is all that's to making this particle effect now you can go in and you can tweak all these different settings like the rotation and the spin of your particles and same with the turbulence you can come over here and animate your X and Y and Z strengths all different kind of ways to really make these particles do whatever you want them to do. So there's so many different options of how we can control the particles, whether they come at the screen or go away from the screen. Like I said, that's all done with the angle Z, angle Z variance. So there's so many things you can do within these uh, particle image emitters and the particle turbulence nodes. And I do want to just say one thing is make sure you select the particle image emitter and not the particle emitter because we are trying to convert this image of the logo to a particle, convert it to it being made up of particles and not just um, our particle emitter, which would just create particles out of nowhere. So make sure you guys select the particle image emitter. But that is everything that goes into making these logos or images dissolve and blow away with the wind essentially. All right guys, so that is how you take any logo or photo in DaVinci Resolve and turn it into like a particle disintegrating effect like that. I do it a lot in my Jimmy Allen videos. If you ever see any of my recap videos, I will uh, actually put one up here on the card. So if you wanna check that out, click that. 
But, however, if you want to like learn how I do his logo effect, this is exactly how I did it. So I want to thank everybody that has been following along and subscribing. We are almost to a thousand subscribers, which I'm super psyched about. So if you guys aren't subscribed and following along, make sure you do so because at a thousand subscribers, I'm going to be doing some sort of giveaway for you guys to give back to you guys because I know uh, that I wouldn't be where I'm at without you guys always following along and doing what you're doing. And I never thought I would honestly be almost to a thousand subscribers. So thank you all for that. And uh, yeah, just make sure you hit that bell notification so you're staying up to date on all the latest videos. Thank you all for watching and I am going to catch you in the next one.